Thank you for joining us as we present another Spirit-filled message by RCCG ICC UK, the home of kings and priests. Please grab your Bible, notepad and your pen as you're about to listen to this transformational message. God bless you. I, I have just a few um, minutes to go. But very quickly, church, please be seated. Yeah. Um, Proverbs chapter 11, very quickly. Well, just to give us as a reminder, as you remember last week, on the last two weeks, we have been looking at certain things from God's word. Hallelujah. Last week, we looked at Abraham's life. Amen. And the reason why we began to look at this is I'm actually dealing with a subject called giving. You know, I'm looking at the, 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 the principle of giving in scripture. Okay. All of us are familiar with John 3.16. The Bible says, for God so what? Loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever shall believe in him shall what? Shall not perish but shall what have everlasting life okay but the, in the amplified bible you'll actually see something there which many translations don't have it actually says for god so greatly loved and dearly what prized the world that he even you look at the word there it doesn't say that he gave okay there's a difference between giving and giving up are we together Okay, there is a massive difference between giving and giving up. The word to give or giving there means that from part of what you have, you give somebody some share of it. Okay, are we together? Okay, but the word give up means that you have nothing left. So if, for example, you... You, you give up your seat. It means that you don't have anywhere to sit. Are we together? Okay. But if I, you just give me a chair, you just bring out that one and give for me there. Oh, you know, in, in Igbo language, when you come to somebody's house, they would normally say, what would they say? No, not, no. They would say, oh, chair do kwa. Yeah, which means that there's a chair. We welcome you. Please sit down. Okay. And then, but, one of the things that we will see is that the Bible doesn't say that God gave. If God gave, it is possible that he had many. Are we together? Okay. But he gave up. And, and that word, give up, is very similar, okay, to a passage that um, we men don't like. In fact, every time I see that scripture, I, I wish they did not put it there in the Bible. You know, who knows what scripture that is? Hello. What is the scripture that we men, we don't like in the Bible? Pardon? Tell me now. You know it very well. Eh? You know it. He, he doesn't know what we're talking about. You, you should know. Eh? The passage of scripture that we don't like in the Bible. That we men don't like. Men don't like. I know the one you like. What's the other one you don't like? You are not reading your Bible. Ah. Okay, let me read it. All right. Tommy likes this one. Ah. <laughs> She's hoping that she will quote it left, right, and center to the man that comes to her. You look nice and green, actually. Green and black. Very nice. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. What does it say? Hus let all wives read it let all women all women husbands love your wives as christ loved the church and gave himself up for her hallelujah amen so it says to give up okay if i told you i love that scripture i'll be lying and god knows that i'm on the altar i won't lie amen all right? I'm even off the altar, so I won't lie either. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. You know why I don't like it? Because it always convicts me. 
Because that's one I know I'm struggling with. Are we together? Yeah? No, let me tell you. Many times you may think you're very generous, you're a nice person. Until you marry, you will know you're a wicked person. No, that's what my dad used to say. Marriage will reveal the wickedness of your heart. Do you know, even Jesus Christ said so. Eh? He says that marriage will reveal the hardness of your heart. That's true. If not, if not, no, Matthew chapter 19 is very clear. Eh? It says, why did Moses then permit people to divorce? Eh? Let me tell you why. It's because if he did not permit you to divorce, you will kill people. You will kill, you will kill somebody. Because you know what? That's usually the only way out. Death. So every man will be plotting the death of his wife. It's true. So God had to create a release valve somewhere. You know? Otherwise, it's true. Even till today, many men kill their wives because they think there's no way out. You know? It, it, it's, it's, it's true. You know? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is actually true. Yeah? Pardon? Yeah, yeah, it, it's a reality. So God just said, rather than kill her, eh? okay, divorce, divorce. So divorce is the alternative to murder. No, it's true. It's, it's, it's actually true. You know, because if you're not going to murder her, then it is you that must give up yourself, which means you must die to yourself. And not many men, including myself, want to die for, for her. You want to die for her? Eh? He said, I'm already dead. He said, <laughs> it, it's true. But, but the word there means to give up. To give up. What's he giving up? What well, himself. He's giving up his life. You know. He's, he's having to give up his life. Not to give her some of his life. But to give up. And I can tell you. Anybody who is honest will tell you. It is the hardest thing to do. That is why the Bible says in order to follow Christ. The first thing you must do is what? Deny yourself. deny yourself because man by nature eh, naturally by listen even when we are born again eh, it is hard for a man to give himself up or to deny himself you know today i was saying to the group that anybody who tells you ah me i'm not a proud person is a very proud person me i don't lie you're a liar So anybody who says that I don't have a problem with giving up myself, that one is a liar. Because it is not easy. It takes a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. Eh? A divine intervention and interception of a man's heart for him to be able to what? Give up himself, deny himself, yeah? and lay it down for another. That's why the Bible says, greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for another. You know. And all through scripture, everywhere where people were able to lay down their wishes, lay down their lives, give up their lives for the sake of another. It is actually showing you what the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of an individual. Because all men, no matter how good they may be, and the Bible says there's no man that is good, okay? All men are naturally selfish. You see, that when people come to me and are telling me, oh, he's like this or she's like this, and the first thing I want to ask is that, is the person saved? Say, no, he doesn't want to come to it. I said, so let me ask you a question. 
Dog. Eh? Keta. Okay. Let me tell you what is what would be abnormal for a dog? What would be abnormal for it? No, no, no. What would be abnormal for a dog? To talk, isn't it? What would be abnormal for a dog? Not to like bone, isn't it? Okay. What else would be abnormal for a dog? Not to bark. Uh -huh. Okay. Praise God. But if your dog is barking, is eating bone, and it is um, and is b biting, is that a good, healthy dog? Yeah. So an unbeliever that is lying, cheating, stealing, um, doesn't like church, doesn't want to come to church, is not interested in things of God. Is that normal? Yes. That's very normal. It's normal now. It's normal. But if the person says, I'm born again, then that becomes what? Abnormal. Okay. That is why, and, and I want to go back to this, yeah. What Safira and Ananias did, eh, was highly what? Abnormal. Ah, ah. That's why Paul was shocked. If you look at the statement of Paul in Acts chapter 5, he says, how could, how, how, how could Satan enter your heart and cause you to hold back? First of all, to lie and to what? Hold back. Okay, which tells us that there are two evidences of the presence of Satan in a man's life. What are they? Lying and what? Holding back. Every time in scripture, okay, the Bible speaks about Jesus Christ, okay? Jesus Christ said, I lay myself, my life down. No one takes it from me, okay? And the Bible says, I'm the way, the truth, and the what? The life, okay? So two things that signify the work of the Holy Spirit. Please note this down, yeah? Then this, is, this is called inductive reasoning, okay? If... Two things that, that show the, the presence that Satan has filled a man's heart. If two things that show that Satan has filled a man's heart, what will they be? Lying and what? Holding back. So when a person is filled with the Holy Spirit, what will be the evidence? Truthfulness and what? Selflessness. Giving up, giving of themselves completely. In maths, they will say, if X equals Y, then Y equals, <laughs> I don't know what, but that's how it, they say it, isn't it? Yeah. So if, clearly, when Satan has filled a person's heart, okay, and taken over, that you will see two evidences, which is lying and what? Withholding. Then that means that when the Holy Spirit has filled a man's heart, then the opposite, because the Holy Spirit is always the opposite of what Satan is, or Satan is always the opposite of what God is, will mean of what? Giving of oneself completely. And also in truth. You know? And this thing about withholding, okay? First of all, speaking the truth and withholding. All through scripture, God keeps on showing us patterns. That every time men truly were filled with God, or had actually, or they recognized whose presence that they were in, they were always willing. And the Bible does in chapter, watch this, chapter 12, okay, of, of John, okay, which you find it also in Matthew, it's in Mark as well, okay, and in Luke. It says that, when we withhold, it attracts what? It attracts what? Every time you withhold, it attracts what? Death. Every time you give and what? Release. It attracts what? Life.
Let me repeat. Every time you withhold, it attracts what? Death. The Bible says it attracts death and a curse. Okay? And then guess what? Every time men give and release without holding back, it attracts what? Life and a what? Blessing. This is a natural truth and it is a spiritual truth. In Chronicles, we see an interesting story. How many of us know somebody called Onan? Onan. Okay, who can tell us about Onan? Okay. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Okay. Watch this. The Bible says, yeah. We know where the story is, okay? But very quickly, okay? Um, it says that Judah had three sons, as you said, okay? From Bath Bathshua, a Canaanite woman. Their names were, and he mentioned this. And it says that, but the law saw that the oldest son was, okay, let, let me actually go back a little bit, okay? To, to take us to the, specific passages okay where this story is and it's important for us to bear it in mind okay um okay that that would be in genesis genesis 38 from verse 10 or you can look up in other areas genesis 38 okay um verse let's take it from verse 8 okay and we're going to verse 10 okay take it from verse 8 Okay, Genesis 38. I was going to read you the in, in Chronicles. Okay. All right. So carry on. Okay, let's read together. It says what? Then Judah told Onan, marry your brother's widow. Live with her and raise offspring for your brother. Okay, next line. It says, but Onan knew that the family would not be his. So when he cohabited with his brother's widow, he prevented conception lest he should raise up a child for his brother. Next line. Okay, it says, and the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Therefore, what? He what? Slew him what? Also. First of all, one of these things is one one thing that God, this tells us. Yeah, tell your neighbor, God sees all. Many times we think that it's only when we're in church that God is watching. Eh? When you enter your bedroom, are you listening? Thank you very much. Eh? When you are God, <laughs> when you enter your bedroom. When you enter your domot, are we together? Eh? When you think you are in your privacy, eh? God is watching everything. So when Uncle Yomi is in his house, amen? Uh, he's with his wife, amen? Now, the man is fearing now, so God comes to watch. <laughs> and, and he's with his wife, with his wife. Am I making sense? Hmm? Every move he's making, all his moves, God is watching. No, no, this is important for you and I to understand this. Yeah? But God also... You see, hear this, huh? but I want to take you to something that is after far beyond this. Okay, just the physical act. Okay, if he and his wife have agreed that this is going to be our method of contraception, are we together? Yeah, and we're going to give it to the birds. We're going to throw it away. No problem. 
But if there is a secret agenda in the heart that is making him do this, the same thing that is not by whatever. Now, the Bible says, you wicked man. The Bible does not say he was not having intercourse with, his, with the woman. He was having intercourse. When he just reaches the time of ejaculation, he will just use style and just release it on the ground. You know? And God said, you are evil. Because you know what, eh? your heart, because you are thinking in your mind that if I have children of this woman, they will name it after my brother. So because that, he withheld his seed from her. And the Bible says God killed him. That is why Peter said, Safir and Ananias, how did it enter your mind that you would even... Did you think that God is blind or that God does not see? He says, you did not lie to men. Because God was watching when you guys made that arrangement in your heart. And this is why even the motive of our hearts, you know, even the things that we make concern in our heart and we think nobody knows and so on. God knows the thoughts, the motives. That's why the Bible tells us in 1 Samuel, eh? the Lord said to um, Samuel, men look outward, but God looks at where? The inward part of the heart. And that is why the Bible speaks about this in Proverbs chapter 11 from verse 24. Okay, Proverbs 11 from verse 24. Okay. Proverbs eleven twenty four. Okay. The Bible says, There are those who generously scatter abroad, and yet what? Increase more. There are those who withhold more than is fitting or what is justly due, but it results only what? In what? Want. You know what that means? In lack. So as you're withholding, eh, what you think you're withholding from others, it is actually... You are withholding you, you are losing out. That's why the Lord said, if whoever gives up his life will what? Gain it. But he who holds on to his own life will do what? Lose it. And then we'll look at what the next verse says. Next verse says, the liberal person shall be what? Enriched. And he who waters shall himself be what? Watered. Now look at the next line. The next line now says, watch this. It says, people do what? Curse. Him who holds back grain when the public needs it. But a blessing from God and man is upon the head of him who sells. In the NLT, okay, this particular verse is put somehow in the NLT. For those of us who are business people, and okay, put it in the NLT. Look at this, yeah? Oh, this is not the translation I really wanted to, Yeah? There is another NLT, not this one. It's that people curse those who hoard their grain. In, a, in, in brackets, it says that hoping that they would um, get higher value for it. Okay? Um, and you know, when goods are scarce, people begin to hoard. Yeah? Because the price of it will now go up and so on. Okay? It's what happened with toilet roll when COVID came out. Okay? Ordinary things that were cheap before, you know, the price went up. And that is what you call artificial inflation of prices and so on, okay? But the scripture says that, you know, it says, but the, bless those who sell in a time of need, okay? Now, saints of God, this truth, John chapter 12 from verse 24, John chapter 12 from verse 24, okay? John 12, 24. It says... I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted into the soil and dies, it remains alone. But, it is, but its death will produce many kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Next line, okay, next line. Those who love their life in this world will do what? Will lose it. Those who care nothing for their life in this world will what? Keep it to eternity. Next line. Okay, anyone who wants to serve me and, and must follow me because my servants must be where I am and the Father will honor him who serves me. In the Amplified, it's actually put, 
you know, um, in a different way. And the Bible tells us, watch this. Many times we say this, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, isn't it? They overcame him by the word of their testimony. And we forget the last thing that makes it work. What is it that makes that scripture work? It says they did not love their lives even unto death. Okay. That means that, you see, once Satan sees that you love something more than God, you have already become weak. He has defeated you. The reason why Satan could not defeat Jesus was because Jesus Christ was not afraid to lay down his life. Anywhere, where, and once you're somebody who loves your life, eh, the Bible says that Satan has dominion over your life. The power of the devil is connected to the fear of hope. And that is why every time, watch this, eh, whenever they, they use... Um, what's it called again? Torture and the threat of death to extract information and to cause people to what become disloyal. If it is not them physically, they will threaten them with somebody who they love. And Satan would always look for something you prize eh, to use it to what work against you. And because I'm going to close at this point, let me say this. Eh? Revelation chapter, I, what I was talking about was Revelation chapter 12. Okay, all right. Yeah, go on. Revelation chapter 12. Okay, I'm laying down certain principles here. Okay, all right. You cannot, please hear this church. Eh? You cannot have authority in the presence of Satan. You cannot have authority in the presence of demons. Many times, the reason why believers are afraid of demons, are afraid of the devil, and have always, is because, you know what, eh? their life is too precious to them. You cannot threaten somebody, and you cannot have power over somebody who his life does not mean anything to him. Is this making sense? Once a person is so I, I want to live i'm I, I, you know then the ones they see that you're somebody who is more interested in living than dying and laying down your life straight away you have lost and what it says let's read together it says what and they have overcome conquered him by means of what number one is the what the blood of the lamb that's one. Number two, by the utterance of their testimony. Okay. Then look at what the last one says. What? For they did not love and cling to life. Even when faced with death, they were holding their lives what? cheap till they had to die for their witnessing. And because of that, God honored them. If you remember that the blessing that God gave to Abraham was this. He said to them, your children will possess what? The gates of their enemies. Church of God, please hear this. You can never possess the gate of your enemies when you're still holding on to things. When you're still holding on to life, you're still holding on to money. You're holding on to your time. You're holding on to this treasure. You're holding on to your children. You're holding on to anything. Let me say this. Anything that you're holding on to eh, will become a source of weakness in your life. And Satan will use it as an inroad, a, a foothold and a stronghold into your life. Many times I, I pray a prayer. I say, God, please help me not to love JJ eh, too much. Help me, Lord God, eh, to just to keep him at arm's length. So sometimes I fight my love for him to keep him at a distance. When I wanted to get married, I told my wife, darling, you will not be number one in my life. You will not be number two. You will not be number three. Your position is from number four. What are the first three? God the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Ghost. They will, that, they will be number one, two, and three. Eh? I said to her, darling, because you know what? If I love you and make you number one in my life, eh? Satan will use it to defeat me. And with what? And he can even, God can even kill you because of that. So I say, God, and look at how life is. I have only one. So it will make sense for me to love my only, isn't it? Uh -huh. But I always say, God, please, eh? help me sometimes when i'm fighting jj he doesn't know i'm actually trying to protect my own heart and sometimes he wonders does this my father love me eh? in fact it's because i love you i'm keeping you at a distance so my heart will not be cleave to you too much so that if anything happens eh, i can still stand before god and worship god do you know what the hedge how Job built a hedge around his life. It was that eh, he loved God more than he loved anything else. And so the Bible says that when Satan came and said, maybe if I touch this, but go say, try. Satan removed everything from his life. The Bible says, yet, what did he say? Job did not what curse God, yet he worshiped God. Many of us, eh, let me tell you, if Satan is going to enter your life, it will be through your children because you have loved your children too much some of us it is through our money eh? Satan will enter through your life through your money because you love money too much you want to hold it you want to keep it you want to preserve it and so on some of us it could be our job then that job will disappoint you but one thing I can guarantee you is this eh? you cannot love God too much and Satan watch this <laughs> his original intention is to remove you from God so he cannot make you love God too much and so the Lord said you shall love the Lord your God with what all your heart all your mind all your strength Ev all these things and seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and what all these things will be added unto you so number one principle is this huh? whatever whatever you love more than god will become a snare in your life so I'm saying, my children my children okay no problem ah children will disappoint you oh my husband my husband really <laughs> husband will disappoint you my wife oh how i love my wife I say really don't worry you will see so when you want to close doors to the enemy in your life eh, you close it by giving your whole heart to god loving god with everything and say god look my children they're yours my wife yours my job is yours lord whatever and nothing must come close as when so when the bible says guard your heart with all diligence number one thing is this don't bring anything too close into your heart so that you will not be disappointed and number two so as satan will not have what a handle in your life Father, this morning, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. The Bible says, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives, even unto death. Father, you said that the victory of the people in the hall of faith was that they love not their lives unto death. But they're willing to give it up and lay it down at your feet. Father, we come before you this morning as a church, as a people. Lord, help us to reorganize our lives where you will be the Alpha and the Omega. Lord, this morning, deliver us from anything that we have come to love 
the bible says if you put it on the screen you know first john 5 21 it says my children avoid idolatry anything that you put in your heart before god father we see that Sapphira and ananias died onan died look, look, so many curses death is attracted into our lives because of loving anything other than you father this morning in the name of jesus be number one in our hearts lord let there be no room for satan to fill anywhere father deliver us from a lying spirit deliver us from withholding help us lord god to give it all up to you that you would have have it all have it all have it all have it all in jesus precious and holy name amen who knows what siki one is who knows what siki one is he's a joker eh? let me tell you in the kingdom of god the greatest joker you can have eh, is to lay down your life for god but once you do that satan's power is finished this is the secret of the kingdom where you know what mm, everything you want take so when god says they ask you for one give them two they want your your coat give them your pants they want this take ah is there nothing we can take from this man that will cause him to say nothing he has given everything up to god i tell you if you take hold of this truth in your heart eh ah satan's power is finished over your life you can't rob me anymore you can't rob me let us stand up before god hallelujah hallelujah in case some of us don't know this is a deliverance service eh? if you take this truth into your heart eh? ha. let me tell you the peace of god eh, that will enter your heart eh? because the power of the enemy is finished finished because he always needs something in you but when you have laid everything down for the lord hallelujah father thank you all to you lord i give it all to you thank you for listening to this message we hope that it has been a blessing to you for counseling prayers or to fellowship with us visit us at rccg icc rear of 31 to 35 high road behind nat west bank romford essex rm6 6qj united kingdom